refraction of light. We know what is refraction of light. When the light goes from one medium to the other, it bends towards the normal or away from the normal if it is an oblique incidence. And if it is along the normal, then it goes undeviated. Now, the bending of the light ray or which we call it as the refraction is because of the change in the speed of light. Now, even though there is a change in the speed of light, when it goes along the normal, why it does not bend? I have given the explanation on a separate video which goes for more than 10 minutes. I want you to watch that if you want to understand better. And we know that the cause of refraction is the change in the speed of light. So, if you ask a question, when there is a change in the speed of light, why should it bend? Then I want you to watch that video which I have done it separately. Okay, now, let me just revise those. When the light ray goes from one medium to the other, let me take this as the rarer and let this be denser. Here, let the speed be c1. In this case, let me take it as the speed as the c2. Let me draw the normal. So, here instead of going along this path, since this is a denser, it will bend towards the normal. So, this is how it is. But if you take it as instead of rarer and the denser, let me take it as the denser and the rarer. So, here when the light ray strikes at the point of incidence, drawing the normal, since it is a rarer, it is going along this path, it bends away from the normal, which we know very well. And then when it is along the normal, it goes just undeviated. Let it be from rarer to denser or denser to rarer, it goes undeviated. Now, this is for a flat surface of separation. Now, let me draw it for curved spherical surface of separation. For example, when you take it as a lens in which uh, the surface is nothing but it is a spherical part of the sphere. So, let me do it for that. So, when you come across spherical surface of separation, let me take it as here is the center of curvature. Now, if the light ray is incident like this, now how will it bend? Again depends on, now if I take it as the rarer and here let it be denser. Now, at this point of incidence, we are drawing the normal. So, at this point, we have to draw the normal. Normal is nothing but the line which passes through the center of curvature. So, the center of curvature being here, so this is the normal. So, this being the normal, now how will it bend? It is a denser. So, instead of going along this path, it will bend towards the normal. So, it will go in a path like this. Now, this we have drawn which is similar to that. Once again, let me draw the one which is similar to this. So, here being the surface of separation being spherical, if this is center of curvature, the light which is incident here at this point, I have to draw the normal. So, this is the normal, this being the normal. Instead of going along this path, since this is denser, here being denser and that being the rarer. Now, you can see when it is incident, instead of going along this, since at rarer it will bend away from the normal, this being the normal, it has to bend away from the normal, so the light ray which goes like this, so which is similar to that. Now, when you want it for along the normal, so let me show it as it is along the normal, this being the center of curvature. So, if you take it as the light ray which is coming along this line, so this line being the normal, if the light ray is along this, then we know it goes undeviated. So, this is how it will be, which is similar to that. So, let this be rarer to denser or denser to rarer, whatever it is, this is how it is going to be. Okay, so, now we know for even a curved surface uh, how to draw which is similar to that. Okay, now, coming to the refractive index. So, we write it as when it goes from medium 1 to 2. So, let me write it as here the refractive index is n1 and in the second medium let the refractive index be n2. So, when it is going from 1 to 2, then you want it in terms of the speed, then it is c1 divided by c2. So, 1 being here, 1 being the first 
2 being the second. So, 1 has to be the first, the 2 has to be the second. Of course, you should not interchange. If you interchange, then you have to interchange that also. If you interchange only one side of it, then it goes wrong. Okay, now, this is the basic formula, the refractive index in terms of the speed of light. Now, let me apply it for in glass with respect to water. Just for example, like instead of taking it as 1 and 2. Now, how to write? We have to write it as the one which comes first for which the speed there. So, the water comes first. So, the speed in water divided by the speed in glass. So, this is how we write. Okay, now, if this is vacuum, then we say it is a refractive index of glass with respect to vacuum, which we do not have to say the vacuum. It just you can say it is a refractive index of glass. It is understood as it is with respect to vacuum, which we call it as absolute refractive index. So, when you want the refractive index of a medium, any medium, not only glass, then we do not have to write here anything. What is the meaning of this? This is same as the refractive index of the medium with respect to vacuum. So, this if you want to write it in terms of the speed as how we have it here. So, the one which comes first for that the speed has to be here. So, this is the speed in vacuum. We know the speed of light in vacuum that is the fastest in the universe. Nothing else can go greater than the speed of light in vacuum. But the same speed of light when you take it in medium it becomes lesser. Okay, now, let me write the value which is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 divided by that is we are writing this speed there and then the second is the medium. So, it is a speed in that particular medium. Okay, now, you can see when it comes to the speed of light in vacuum divided by speed of light in medium which is nothing but the absolute refractive index of the medium. So, absolute refractive index of the medium formula is this. Now, very important thing about it the value of any absolute refractive index of a medium you can see that this is the greatest. No time the speed in the medium is going to be greater than this always it will be lesser. So, it is greater divided by lesser is going to be greater than 1. So, this is going to be always greater than 1 that is the absolute refractive index of any medium it is going to be always greater than 1. Okay. In general, can I say that the refractive index has to be always greater than 1? It need not be because now this is a refractive index of denser with respect to rarer. Until this condition is valid, then this is going to be valid. It means when you come across the refractive index of the denser with respect to rarer, this is going to be greater than 1. But when it is the other way, then it is going to be less than 1. That is because when you take it as 1, 2 like this, we know the formula. We have mentioned it as in terms of the speed of light. But now let me write it in terms of refractive index of each separately. Now we read this as refractive index of medium 2 with respect to 1. What we read first that has to come in the numerator. So, I am saying refractive index of medium 2. So, it is n2 divided by the n1. Now, if you look into this, it is 1 by 2. Here 1, 2 for which it is 1 by 2. Here also it is 1, 2, but here it is 2 by 1. Of course, it is just the opposite. There is more chance that, you know, we may make mistake in this or in this, you have to take care of that. Okay, now, this I can also write mathematically. It is 1 over the n1 divided by n2. That is the numerator, which I have taken to the denominator's denominator. Now, if you look at this, it is the 2 by 1, so we have written like this, but this is 1 by 2, so it will be the other way, that is, it will not be like this, so the 2 will come first, so it is going to be this way. Now, you can see the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to 1, this is refractive index of medium 1 with respect to 2, one is the reciprocal of the other. What does it mean? If you take it as the refractive index of the medium, for example, if it is 2, then when you take the reciprocal of that, it is going to be 1 by 2, which is less than 1. That is why, in general, you cannot say that always the refractive index will be greater than 1, but this is always true. 
refractive index of a denser medium with respect to rarer is always greater than 1. But once you take reciprocal, then it will become less than 1. And so, from this I can also interchange these two and say that it will be less than 1. It means uh, the refractive index of the rarer with respect to denser, then this is going to be less than 1. So, that is what we have here the proof. Okay, now, let me write it for the light ray which is going from 1 to 2 and then again it is going from 2 to 3, it is like different media. First the medium is n1, then the n2, then the n3, then it is going from 3 to again let it be back to 1. So, we have it as like different layers where the topmost being having the n1 and then the bottom also it is the n1, I mean the same medium but in between we have different layers. So, as the light passes, so finally you will get it as when you use this formula it is going to be the refractive index of 2 with respect to 1, so it is the 2 by 1 and then this is 3 by 2 and this is 1 by 3. Now you can see that this is getting cancelled, this is getting cancelled with this, this is getting cancelled with this and this is getting cancelled with this and so finally this is becoming 1. Okay, so this is an important relation, you can keep on writing as many as you want but these two should be the same, these two should be the same like that you can keep on writing and so all these are in multiplication and the first and the last being the same then that also get cancelled and you get it as the 1. So, now you can see when you take it as multiple layers for which uh, when it comes back to the same to which it has entered, the medium being the same at the extremes, uh, then altogether when you put it together mathematically we are getting this as 1. The reason is because uh, when it enters whatever the bending effect that occurs, now let me say it is entering like this, uh, now whatever the layer that it has got, uh, finally it will come out the same way, it means uh, it is not having any bending effect, even though it bends towards then again it bends away all those changes happens, but finally since it is the same it will come out to be parallel to the incident and so it is like no bending effect and that is why we are ending up getting it as 1. It is better to know the value of refractive index of air which is approximately 1, when you take it as water it is approximately 1.3, when you take it as glass then this is approximately, it depends on the glass, there are different types of glasses like flint glass, crown glass, soda glass, different glasses are there, so it will vary anywhere from 1.5 to 1.7 and when you take it as the maximum that is in diamond. in diamond it is 2.4, so this is the greatest value and where as the light goes in the diamond as the light travels in the denser medium the refractive index being very large it will undergo the total internal reflection and so finally we see it as it is glittering and so when you say look at it and say wow then the price goes up, it is nothing but the refractive index is very large. So, for different materials we have different refractive indices and you can see that this being the least for air and for diamond being the greatest.